Let's look at the concept of polymorphic models in Django applications. So this was a recent request and I want to dive into it here. Now polymorphic models, this refers to a pattern that involves querying a base model and automatically getting the correct subclass instances when you do so. Now we'll dive into what that means and we'll see an example very soon. But this is basically useful when you have an inheritance hierarchy of models in your application. And we're going to look at multi-table inheritance in this video. Now this is a useful package that we have on screen, Django Polymorphic, and we're going to demonstrate how to use this. However, there are some caveats to this package and the approach of multi-table inheritance in general, so we'll cover that a little bit later on too. Now let's get started. Before we do, if you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page. We've got a link just below the video, and thanks very much to everyone who has contributed to that. And if you want to learn how to build dynamic Django applications with HTMX, check out our Udemy course. We've got a link just below as well. Now let's get started with Django Polymorphic. This is a package that builds on top of standard Django model inheritance. So we're going to start in this video by looking at model inheritance in general and how Django actually creates that itself in the database. Now I'm going to open VS Code and I'm going to go to a models.py file that we have in this application. Now what we have here is a course model in Django and courses comprise of lessons. Now this is where we get to multi-table inheritance. This lesson model is a base model for course content. And it contains the common fields that are needed on a lesson, but there are subclasses that actually determine the types of lessons that are available. So for example, a video here is a type of lesson, and this multi-table inheritance is done in Django by inheriting from a non-abstract class such as lesson. So for a course, you can imagine that lessons could be videos, they could be assignments, they could be articles, perhaps quizzes, and so on. Notice that each one of these three models inherits from the lesson model. And what that means is that all of these fields are going to be available on the subclasses. That's normal inheritance in Python. And we'll see how this is applied at the database level when you create these hierarchies of models. So I'm going to open up Beekeeper Studio, and this allows us to look at the tables that we have in the database. And notice we have the lesson table here. Now, even though lesson was subclassed to create the actual lesson types, there is actually a table created in the database when you use multi-table inheritance. So you can think of lesson here as the parent and the types such as video, assignment and article. These are the children. So let's have a look at what's in the lesson table. Now, I've pre-populated this with some fake courses, but we have the fields that were defined on the Django model. So for example, the order of each lesson within a course and the title, these are captured here because they were actually fields on this lesson model. Now we're going to add the polymorphic behavior later on and see the benefit of that. But for the time being, just notice that these fields here have been added to their own database table. And if we go to the subclasses such as video, let's have a look at those tables. If we right click this and view the data, Notice that we only have that duration seconds column here. That was the actual field that we added to the subclass. And we also have an additional field that's been added automatically by Django, and that's the lesson pointer ID. This is essentially a foreign key to the parent lesson. So how this is actually structured is that the parent table is created in the database, and then there is a foreign key for each one of the subclasses to that parent table. Now the benefit of this is that common fields for all types of lessons can be stored in the parent table. And then each type of child, such as video, will have their own specific fields. For example, duration in seconds. That's not something you might apply to an article or an assignment. Perhaps you could. But the point is that certain types or subtypes will have their own data, their own fields that don't necessarily make sense on the other types. So that's multi-table inheritance. And one of the dangers of this is that when you have a parent table and then a child table, and potentially you might have nested children within that as well, that leads to lots of joins and perhaps performance issues in your database if you're not very careful and know what you're doing. So this is a topic that is, I think, quite controversial. A lot of people don't like multi-table inheritance, but it is one way to deal with this issue where you have a parent model and in your domain, you might have child models that each have their own specific needs. For example, video, quiz, assignment, and so on. So that's multi-table inheritance. Let's look at one of the issues with this, and it's one of the issues that's solved by Django Polymorphic. So if we go to index.py, or views.py, sorry, and we look at this index view here, what we're doing is we fetch a course from the database with course.objects.first, and then we get all of the lessons associated with that course. So lesson.objects.filter, and we filter down by course. Now, if we iterate over each lesson that we have, 
and print the type to the terminal, what do you think we're going to see? So let's open the terminal just now and I'm going to start the server using the manage.py run server command. And if I go to that page just now, we're going to see that each type here is the lesson type. Now, at the surface, that might make sense because we have fetched the lessons using lesson.objects.filter. But the caveat here is that each lesson is actually going to be a subtype, for example, video or assignment. So this structure is a bit complicated here because we don't actually know by default which type we are dealing with when we actually query those lessons using this ORM statement here. When we iterate over these lessons, the first one could be a video, it could be an article and so on. But what we see is an instance of the lesson object. Now Django Polymorphic makes this whole situation a little bit more easy to deal with. And you can see the example here, if you have a project model that has subclasses such as art project, research project and so on, when you query these objects, you actually get the correct types returned from the database. Now that's not what we have at the moment. When we perform this query here, we're getting back lesson objects, no matter what the actual subtype is. You can see that in this documentation with vanilla Django, you get the base class objects and that's really what you want. So let's get started here and install Django Polymorphic. I'm gonna copy the name of the package and let's go to the terminal at the bottom and we're gonna run UV add to run this and install this into the environment. Once it's installed, we can go to the Django projects settings.py file and we're going to add it to installed apps. So at the bottom here, I'm gonna add polymorphic. And once we have that, we can go back to the quick start here. And what we need to do is we need to use the polymorphic model instead of Django's normal model class. You can see that here on the base type or the parent type, you subclass the polymorphic model. So let's do that just now. I'm gonna copy the import and we're gonna to go to models.py. Let's bring that import in at the top. And this polymorphic model here is what we're going to subclass at the parent lesson model. So remember, a course is comprised of lessons, but each lesson can be one of the subtypes that we have here, video, assignment, and article. And now that we've added that polymorphic type as the base class for our lesson, we can run the make migrations command. So it's gonna be uv run manage.py make migrations. And then after it's created that migration file, we can run the migrate command. So let's do that just now and hopefully that's going to apply those changes. And this process of adding the polymorphic model to lesson and then applying these migrations performs one simple change to the database. So let's go back to this database just now. If we go back to the parent model, which is lesson, we're going to notice a new column has appeared here. So I'm gonna refresh this and we can see we have a new column. So I need to scroll across here and this is the column, it's called polymorphic content type ID. Now this uses Django's content types framework. And currently this is null because we had existing values before we applied that migration. But when we add new data in the future, it's going to automatically fill this out with the correct content type ID. Now let's see an example of that. What I'm gonna do is actually remove all data from the database. And we're gonna show a management command here to do that. And it's gonna be uv run manage.py and the command is flush. Let's execute that and we get a confirmation here. Do you want to destroy the database or rather destroy all the data? We're gonna select yes here. And then once we've done that, we no longer have any data in that database. And it just so happens that for this particular video, I prepared a management command called seed courses. And that's automatically gonna handle creating a bunch of course objects. And then we create the subtypes such as video. And if you're not familiar with multi-table inheritance, this is a simple way to just create the subtypes here. We use normal Django ORM statements like video.objects.create and we pass the fields that are related not only to the video model itself, but also to the parent model. And it automatically, or rather Django will automatically handle creating the right rows in the parent and child table. So let's go back to the terminal and we're gonna run the seed courses management command. And once that's done, we now have a database that's populated with data again. I'm gonna go back here and when we refresh the lesson table, we're going to see at the right hand side, the content type ID is now populated. Now for each row in the lesson table, this is linking that to the content type ID of the subtype, for example, video, I believe is number 11. If we go to the Django content type table here, let's inspect that. And you can see for the ID of 11, that indeed refers to the video model. Now, if you want to know more about the content types framework, I'll leave a link to our ORM series video just below. But for now, let's move on. And now that we've added Django polymorphic, I want to go back to views.py. Here we fetched all of the lessons from the database and we iterated over each one of them and printed the type to the terminal. I'm gonna start the server again here 
and I'm going to visit this page and we're going to see what shows up on the terminal. So I'm refreshing that page just now and you can see at the bottom the types that are being printed and instead of that parent type that we had, the lesson type, we are now getting the correct subtypes such as video, article, assignment and another video at the bottom. So that's really useful because we now know which objects we're dealing with when we perform that query to the database. So if we were building a course website and each course had lessons that could be of various different types, we can simply perform this query here on line 8 and we're going to get back the correct types for all of the lessons that are in that course. Now it's polymorphic because we have many different forms of lessons and I believe that's the definition of polymorphism. If you've done any object oriented courses at university you've probably heard the term polymorphic. It comes from Greek and I believe it means many forms. That indeed is the extent of my Greek knowledge but there are some useful utilities that are also provided by this package. So as well as using dot .filter here what we could do is we could use a handy function that's added called instance of and then we could pass video into that. Now I do need to import video at the top and let's explain what's going on here. So here we're fetching all videos from the database using the instance of method. So again we're using the lesson parent model here but if we only want to get videos we can use this handy manager method that's added called instance of. If I go back to this page here and we refresh the page Notice that at, in the terminal at the bottom, we are only getting the videos. And because of query set chaining, this will also work if we add the filter that we had before and filter this down to an individual course, for example. And again, when we refresh that page, we only get the videos at the bottom. And this instance of method takes multiple arguments. So as well as video, we could pass article in here. And let's add that import at the top. And this time, if we refresh the page that I have, not on this screen but on another screen, you can see we get back the articles and the videos but the other object that was a subtype is not included. So that's pretty handy and it might be useful in some scenarios for your course website. And there's an inverse of instance of and that's the not instance of method. So that's going to give us back all subtypes that are not videos and articles. So let's see what appears on the terminal at the bottom. This time we only get back assignment. So these are really useful querying additions from the Django Polymorphic package. Let's now move on and we're going to look at admin integration with Django Polymorphic. So I'm on the documentation on admin integration and it's possible to regi register your individual polymorphic models in the Django admin. But to use those models in a single cohesive interface there are some extra base classes available. Now I'll leave a link to this below the video but the example basically has what we need. And from the polymorphic admin module we have access to a parent model admin and also a child model admin class. So I'm going to copy this and we're going to bring it into our admin.py file. So let's go to admin.py and I'm going to paste that at the top. Now the first thing I want to do is define the parent admin class and you can see how that's done in this documentation. You subclass the polymorphic parent model admin and you provide the child models as a tuple. So let's start by defining this parent model. And in admin.py we need to import some of our models, lesson, video, assignment and article. And then we can go back here and we can basically copy this structure that we have. And I'm going to paste it into models.py and let's close the terminal for now and let's make this a little bit more clear. So we're registering this class with the lesson parent class that we had from models.py. And I'm going to call this lesson parent admin and the base model here we don't need to actually set because we're setting it using admin.register. Now we do need to set the child model so I'm going to paste in the child models of this lesson and that was video, article and assignment. And I'm going to remove this list filter and paste this in here. So we're setting a list display and that contains the fields we want to show up on the list page for the lesson class. And we're adding an ordering as well. Now let's go to the Django admin and you can see the lesson model has appeared on this page. And if we click through to that you can see the different lessons that have been set up. Now that list page will work but nothing else is going to work at the moment so if we try and add a new lesson we have this error no child admin site was registered for the video model. So the next step here is to add the child model classes and we can do so by subclassing the polymorphic child model admin. Let's go back to admin.py and the structure of these is going to be very similar for each one of them so I'm going to paste these in just now. So we start with the video admin and we register that with the video model and notice that all of these three classes that I've added are subclassing that child model admin and we link each one of these to the appropriate base model and now if we save admin.py and go back to the Django admin we should hopefully be able to access this page when we refresh the page. 
So this is the benefit of adding the child and parent classes here. When we actually go to add a new lesson, this utility adds some stuff to the Django admin. We can select the type of lesson. And if I wanted to select video, we could select that here. And we get taken to the appropriate page where we can create a video. And it has the fields that are specific to videos, for example, the duration in seconds. So just to reiterate, if we go back to the home page here and go to lessons, when we go to an individual lesson, we get the right model here. This one here is an article and if we go to add a new lesson, before we actually add the object, we have this selection that we can make based on the child models and that allows us to add various different types of content or it's managed through a single admin page on the admin UI. So that's also a really useful addition from Django Polymorphic. Let's go back to the documentation and I want to look at integrations at the moment. So this package is nicely integrated with various Django packages such as Django Guardian and Django REST framework. For example, this defines a polymorphic serializer that you can use. And if we scroll down here, we have additional packages such as MPTT for tree data. And Django Reversion also works with Django Polymorphic as well. So I'll leave a link to this page just below the video. This is some of the integrations that are provided by Django Polymorphic. And I want to look at the performance considerations page as well. And as it says at the top, usually when Django developers create their own polymorphic solution without using Django Polymorphic, it can result in a variation of this list comprehension here. We are checking what the instance is for every object in a query set. That has bad performance, it introduces additional queries for every object. And compared to doing something like that, Django Polymorphic has the advantage that it only needs one SQL type per object type and not per object. So Django Polymorphic is quite intelligent about how it does these queries. And if you're looking for an alternative, we have an alternative here in the Inheritance Manager in Django Extensions. This is something I covered on the channel a while ago. I'll leave a link to that just below. So this is an alternative that you can use. And if you're typically using Django Extensions in a project, you might want to stick with this one. But that is basically all for this video. We've covered Django Polymorphic in detail. And we saw how you can define a parent class such as lesson and then you can have subclasses like video, assignment and article that all inherit from the lesson class and that creates that multi-table inheritance structure in the database. But when you query these objects using a standard query like lesson.objects.filter you actually get back the correct subtypes when you use Django Polymorphic. And we also saw the admin capabilities of the package. We get a much nicer admin experience when we're working with these different types of subclasses. So that's some of the good things. But of course, it's useful to be aware of the caveats. Not everyone is a fan of multi-table inheritance. It's more of an object-oriented paradigm. It doesn't work as naturally with databases. However, it can be useful and you can consolidate your fields on a parent model that are common to all subtypes. Another caveat here is that it introduces extra joins because in order to go from a subtype such as video to its parent lesson, you need to perform that join and those joins are going to be done for all subtypes. Now for most small applications, it's not going to have a great effect, but if you do end up with lots of users and scaling up, you might have to tweak this and perhaps look at a different structure. So that's been a quick introduction on Django Polymorphic. This is not an endorsement of this package for the people that really don't like it. It's up to you and your application depending on how you're modeling your domain and the number of users and the amount of traffic you're expecting in your application. But it does simplify some of the domain modeling and can be useful in certain scenarios. So if you've found this content useful and you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page. We've got a link just below the video. And if you have any requests for similar content, let me know as well. Otherwise, we'll see you soon in the next video.